It's simple. You get a phone call, the person on the other end of the line tells you what to do, you do it. No questions asked, and you're rewarded. With what? Money, women, gold, whatever it is you want, so long as you do what you're told and when to do it. It's not rocket science. It's nothing the normal person couldn't do. Depending on the task you chose, your reward is even more intense than the last. What could be more wonderful? What's the catch, you ask? Uh, some of the things you're asked to do aren't exactly illegal. It was a normal day in my life, the day I found this magical hotbed of wealth, sex, and drugs. Like every other day, I settled myself into work, cooking for a bitch of a boss that didn't seem to give two licks for anyone but himself as he stalked about the kitchen as if he was a shark hunting for prey. His ragged breath hot on my neck as my knife diced cleanly through a tomato. The rush of excitement I felt as the soft flesh peeled away to show the red, juicy insides kept the annoyance of the boss off my mind as his eyes popped out of his head. Slice up and down. He snapped at me, as if I wasn't doing that anyway. I swallowed the sarcasm that burned in my throat, giving a curt nod to the angry giant who turned on his heels before bounding away in an almost ape-like fashion. I returned to my chopping as I prepped food for the dinner rush that was promised to fall upon the five-star restaurant I currently worked in. Heat sweltering in the depths of my outfit as I moved skillfully through the kitchen to grab more of the supplies I needed. Excitement dancing through my bloodstream as I spotted the meat I would soon butcher for the night. My skills consisted of cutting anything and everything with joy, passion, even courage as I took down live fish or chickens. The farm-to-plate restaurant was a perfect place for me, but something was missing in my life. Yeah, I got paid at least five hundred. I paused. What did you have to do? My eyes trailed from meat in hand to the other preps only a few arms length away from me. I could feel cold blood dripping down my gloved fingers, dropping onto my boots as they spoke. I just had to drive these people to an old house and leave. They handed me an envelope of cash before I left. I watched as he pulled out a crumpled up piece of snow white paper from the pocket of his jacket, eyes darting to the other prep before falling back to the man with the envelope. The two were cleaning their station as it was almost time for dinner shift to arrive. How'd you do it? One asked. Just went on their website. The man pulled out another slip of paper, placing it down gracefully to the cutting board below. It almost seemed to glow like a heavenly entity in the lights above a shining beacon of hope and joy. The rest of their conversation was drowned out as I disassociated for a few rapid heartbeats. I sat in a trance, staring for what felt like hours, but could only have been for a few minutes. Charlie! The world started to turn again as if everything was paused and someone suddenly hit the play button. Charlie! The angry voice cut me from my thoughts as my head swiveled towards the angry man before me. My boss's body covered the door behind him, his head almost hitting the door frame. W what? I said, are you going to cut that meat or let it soak the floor? Dark brown eyes stared darkly into my blue ones before I snapped my attention to the bloody pool that stained my once new boots. I, I, I get it cut and get out of here, he shouted, turning towards one of the prep cooks who had just been chatting. One of you clean this shit up. I ain't paying you to slack off. You have five minutes till it's time to pack up and scram. Neither of the two men questioned him. I watched as they darted towards the supplies closet together. I waited until their shoes vanished from sight before scrambling to the table they'd been working at. Dropping my bloody meat in their cutting board with a sly grin, I chopped it up rapidly, waiting for my boss to leave. With a huff, I felt the man's presence diminish before my chopping slowed. I glanced at the envelope that was left on the table before me nudging the envelope with a finger. No money. Frowning, I turned to the paper. It was crisp, a soft yellow color. It looked old, but felt new. My fingers danced against the top of it to smooth out the crinkled lines. Want cash, cars, boats, or whores? Just follow the instructions and anything you desire can be yours. The shouting of my boss, followed by the noise of scrambling feet, caught my attention. Quickly, I grabbed the paper, stuffing it into my pockets before pushing the bloody cuts of steak into its appropriate Tupperware, 
Moving quickly, I darted back to my station, brushed down my tabletop, dropped my dirty dishes in the sink, and wiped off the last bits of tomato from my cutting board. With that, I made my way to the clock-out table, grinning back at the two men who stared angrily at the bloody mess I left on their tables and floors, before heading towards the parking lot. Upon returning to my apartment, I settled into the false light of my lamp, pushing the dirt, papers, and tissues from my desk. Everything collided to the floor with a sharp clatter, my hands sweating as I drove them into the depths of my jacket. The paper was a bit more crumpled than before, as I attempted to flee my place of work before being forced to return my treasure to the hands of those who wouldn't use it in the correct manner. Anything I wanted, for doing something as stupid as being a bootleg taxi service. This would be a piece of cake, honestly. I sneezed a few times, glaring at the dog fur covering my suit. I was allergic to fur, yet my roommate continued to allow her beast of a dog to trample into my room, chewing my stuff, slobbering on everything before I returned to work. The soft hiss of rain pounded lightly against the glass window of my room as I glanced over the front of the page yet again. The title itself was enticing. I could almost feel myself salivating at the thought of all that could become true. Did I really believe that I could have anything? Uh, of course not. Did I really believe that idiot at work got all that money? Of course not. But the idea he might have was just too much for me to pass. I glanced around my crummy room, the paint peeling, the ceiling falling apart, a view of the parking lot where crack whores hung out. This place was a dumpster can in the middle of Garbage Island, and I needed out. I dreamed of owning my own restaurant, having a big home, a fancy car, a girlfriend, or boyfriend. I'm not picky. To get started, please download one of the web browsers below. I blinked a few times. I remember these. I used to download these... I used to download these things to go on the deep web as a teenager. Of course, as a teenager, I got spooked by the smallest things and never dropped farther than a few feet of the murky waters in the shark-infested internet. Pulling my small laptop to a sitting position, I got started. My memory serves me well, as it only took me an hour to download and access exactly where I needed to go. Picking up the paper, it had a very specific set of click here to go here, type this here to do this, Watch this to be added to this. It was a bit longer and confusing at times, but I pride myself on how smart I was, how skilled with the internet I was. Finally, I came to a page. It took a few heartbeats to load. Uh, the front looked almost like Craigslist, but instead of the usual buy-sell-trade mentality, it had different lists. Money, women, specific expenses, special requests, a few more as well. Under those were prices, hours, names of top brands like Apple, Disney, Sony, whatever else you could possibly want. I went to click on the money slot, only to have a chat box jump up. Hello. I hesitated. The name was just Admin1. Uh, hello? Before we get started, I'm going to need some information. He sent me what looked like a job application. It asked for social, uh, date of birth what my current and old jobs were, skills, a driver's license, as well as some other personal information. Was this a scam? I clicked out of the chat windows, clicking on the lower paying amounts, which was 100. It took a few seconds to load, and what jumped up looked just like Craigslist yet again. Ads while covering the page. I need a ride to this location. I need someone to drink this. And more followed. All these things were easy. I'd drink someone's piss for 100. Why not? Clicking out, I explored the other numbers up to a thousand. Some were a little sketchy, from doing nasty uh, pranks, uh, stealing, robbing, raping, and even kidnapping. Yet, I found myself not caring in the slightest. None seemed that terrible to me at the time. Uh, I know, I'm awful. But I need money. I laughed at some of the stupid ones. Uh, help me kill a vampire. Snapchat Mothman. I want to fuck a demon. Those would be easy money. I didn't believe in that nonsense anyway. I figured I'd take on a few easy ones and be set. I pulled the chat window back up. It took me another hour to fill out their forms. After I filled out one, I was sent to another, and another. After that, I made a nickname for the site, 
before being informed I was going to be reviewed and would be contacted via cell phone. He had me pick and choose some of the tasks I was interested in, and with that, I logged off. Giddy like a child on Christmas, I could hardly sleep that night, devoting most of it to sneezing and laying in bed, overjoyed at the idea of leaving this shithole soon. Sleep fell upon me until late that night. I settled into an uncomfortable yet excitable snooze. A week passed. I was a little brokenhearted as I heard nothing. I decided to check the website again to see if an admin would be online, but when I tried to reach the site, it wouldn't allow me. Depression started to take over. Panic. I gave them all I had. My bank account information, my social, my ID. How would I explain this to the cops? Finally, on my day off, I was sent a text. I scrambled from the warmth of my covers, blood roaring in my ears as I looked over the text from an unknown number. Hello, Charlie. You have been accepted by the admin. You will receive a phone call within the next hour. Good luck. Good luck. It was like clockwork as the phone rang only seconds later. My heart leapt as I put the phone to my ear. A ragged voice purred at the other end. Hello, Scrooge. I grinned at the nickname. I'd like to hire you. I was hired that day to follow someone. I met with a very average-looking man. He handed me a camera, a tape recorder, and half of five hundred dollars. With that, I was off. The man tipped his hat at me. He was older, wearing formal clothes with a cane. He looked like someone's grandfather, but I didn't question this as I got to work. It was a long day. I was informed to spy on a male. He was short, maybe five-three, long, shaggy hair, shaggy beard, wearing lazy-looking pants and a t-shirt. He looked like any other normal guy, but I didn't question this. I followed him, took pictures, voice recordings, the works. He didn't seem to notice me. I felt a rush of adrenaline I'd never felt before, and as the time came to a close, I felt the desire for more. I got paid that night, returned home, and waited. I had three days off. I could do anything. I sat in my chair, logged on, was overjoyed to find the page was up yet again. I didn't think twice about it as I started to pick out jobs. The next three days went by in a blur. I did job after job after job. I'd pick a job, and either they'd approve me or reject me before giving me a different job to do. I stayed in the 500 and below range. I stole some stuff broke into a few homes, made some rather unsavory phone calls. I had already made my paychecks two times over by the end of the three days. Upon returning to work, I felt like I was on top of the world. No man was like me. I had so many skills. I could do anything. I learned so much just by doing petty crime. It was such a thrill I almost couldn't hold back my frustration with work. As I started to clean up for the end of the day, my boss stormed up to me, his bulky frame looming over me, his eyes wide with anger. He opened his jaw to speak, but before his words could tumble out, I spoke out. I'm putting in my two weeks, I sneered. The anger on his face melted, brows narrowed in confusion as I puffed out my chest to speak. I found a better job that pays me what I deserve, I informed the male before me. So, Ricky, I continued. I'm heading home. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe. I tossed down my dish towel, stuck my nose in the air, and stomped out. What a rush. I hadn't felt that big since I punched Randy Gorman in high school. I entered my home as if I was the king of the world. My smile wide and my chin up. Maybe I wouldn't go into work tomorrow. What would they do? Fire me? I didn't need them anyway. But the way I was making money, I'd be living the big time soon. I decided work was shit. I didn't need to work for those assholes anymore. Ricky would live without my help. He gave the chef promotion to someone else anyway. I went full-time doing my Craigslist jobs. I still stayed in the lighter range of things, but the more I did, the more I felt the tug to do more, harder, evil things. One night, I decided to do it. I took on a thousand dollar prize, something I'd been hesitant about. I had to kidnap a baby. Uh, what for, you ask? 
Who cares? They could have used this small child as a paperweight, and I wouldn't care one way or another. I did what I always did. Met a lady in a coffee shop. She tried to tell me some stupid bullshit about it being her rightful baby or something. Who cares, really? Boring details. She handed me half of what I was supposed to get. She got up and left. I sipped my coffee, glancing in the bag she handed me. A Walmart bag with a single envelope nestled in the bottom. My smile faded when a noise caught my attention. Someone grabbed the chair across from me, yanked it out, causing the metal frame to make a loud, angry scream. Slowly, I raised my head. My heart stopped. Standing before me was a large, muscle-bound man with a wicked smile formed over his usually frowning face. Ricky. His hair had recently been cut down. His normally dark eyes seemed to have a new light to them as he took a seat. I swore I heard the chair heave in agony under the weight of his large, muscle-built frame. So, Scrooge. My heart stopped. You're the one who's been piling on the workload recently, huh? My mouth was dry. Nothing seemed to want to come out as I opened my jaw to speak, yet silence continued to fill the air. What was I supposed to say? How did he know? I, yes, I squeaked out. Did I really fuck myself over this bad? Was he sent to kill me? I shook silently as I took a quick squig of my warm drink, looking around to prevent myself from looking him in the eye. That's when my eyes fell upon a familiar face. The man I stalked. He was sitting in a chair not too far away. His eyes in a book, narrowed. I have a personal job for you. My eyes snapped back to the man before me. His grin was thin, wide. He almost reminded me of a snake. I almost expected a thin tongue to come out and lick the air around me. A, a job? I replied, dumbly. Of course, I was the best after all. Wait, did that mean... Yes, a job. You'll be getting 20,000 big ones. The world stopped. Did I hear him right? My eyes grew to the size of moons. My jaw almost hit the floor. He looked around us as if making sure no one was within earshot. I glanced around as well, paranoid now, only to notice the man from before was gone. Blinking a few times where he sat, I returned my sharp gaze back to Ricky. W what's the job? I managed to spit out, taking another drink of my latte. I see the way you use that knife of yours, Charlie, he whispered, getting close enough to my face that his lips nearly touched my nose. I felt shivers racing through my body as dread ran up and down my spine like someone ran ice claws across my back. Would I be... C Kill? I couldn't say it. Was someone's life worth all that money? Yes and no. We just need you to make a very specific cut. He replied smoothly, sitting back as he pulled a folder from his bag, pushing the manila paper towards me. As if my hands were made of lead, I slowly reached for it. Ricky moved like lightning. He grabbed my hand and yanked me towards him, so my face was only inches from him. If you accept this offer, and you mess up in any way, he whispered, your face is going to be in my next folder. I yanked my hand away in terror, glancing down at the yellow folder sitting in the table before me, eyes wide with curiosity. I was the best, right? I could cut someone for that much money? Yet, the way Ricky was talking... I didn't hesitate anymore as I grabbed the folder quickly opening it with excitement popping through my veins. The first thing I saw was a picture of a man I stalked. It was the same picture I took. His amber eyes narrowed, his long hair running down his back. Something about the way his eyes looked. It was almost as if he was looking at the camera. Well... Uh, hang on, who do you think I am? I went to cooking college, not Oxford. I need time to read. Skipping over the picture, I read what was... Skipping over the picture, I read what was written. For user, Scrooge. Name, Gunner. Gunner is to be kidnapped, taken to the location on the map. 
He used to have his tattoo on his calf cut off. Not full leg, just tattoo. With a knife provided as asked by the payer. You are then to leave, give the tattoo to the payer, and go home. If this is accepted, you will be asked to take a week off. I glanced up at Ricky, who was sitting back in his chair, her eyebrow raised. Are you the payer? No, I'm an admin. I had a few questions, but before any of them left my mouth, he pulled the paper from my hands, holding it up as if to taunt me with it. If you do this, you'll be working with me and two others. You'll be given all the money at the end. This is a big job. This man will not come out alive, but you will not be part of the main killing. He pulled a picture from his pocket, holding it up for me to see. I narrowed my eyes at the picture. The picture was of Gunner's tattoo. It was the skull of an animal. An animal with what seems to be antlers. Probably a male deer. Judging from the name, I assumed him to be a type of hunter. So he was going to die. But I wasn't the one doing it. I remembered the joy I felt from cutting open meat. The beautiful red. I glanced down at my shoes that still had red stains on them before looking back up at Ricky. I'll do it. The man smiled, handing me the papers. We're going to pick you up tomorrow at 5 a.m. With that, he turned and left. The night went as planned. I broke into the home, super easy, and took the small baby right from its bed. I took the screaming infant to its... mother? Who cares? It wasn't as hard as I assumed it to be, as I drove home to get ready for tomorrow. As I got into my room... I noticed a package on the bed. I slowly lifted it up and noticed it had Scrooge the Duck doodled over the front, causing me to give a dry laugh. The inside of the box had a few more scraps of paper, giving the exact place I would go after the crime is done. What to do after, how to wash off blood, and how to take care of the skin. The box also held a piece of Tupperware from the very place I had just quit from not long ago as well as a knife that was generally made for thin, perfect cuts. It was real. This was happening. I was going to help murder someone. I knew I was excited before, but this was far greater than anything else I could possibly explain. It was as if my body was filled with lightning. Sleeping was impossible. I stayed up for hours looking over the picture of Gunner's tattoo, carving it out in whatever I could find to practice. My heart was beating so fast I swore the entire apartment complex could hear it as I continued with my work. The time ticked by slowly. I finally slept. Heavy, happy sleep. I dreamed of stabbing Gunner, his blood rushing out, covering the floor, lapping hungrily at the legs of my pants, spewing out. The room filled with crimson. I could almost taste the blood. It was so sweet. My alarm went off. It was 4 a.m. I got to my feet, got dressed in throwaway clothes, got a bag together, and waited. A large car pulled up, and an all-white van had its windows tinted as well as a license plate from out of state. I was growing more giddy with every second as I scrambled for the door, throwing open the passenger seat and settling in. This was it. I was going to help kill a man. For a heartbeat, I froze. Was it worth it? Maybe this guy had kids or something. Wait, no, I hate kids. Who cares? I'll kill his kids, too. Are you ready? Ricky asked, glancing down at me. The grunts of a few men behind me spooked me. I looked back to see two men almost the same size as Ricky. I felt no fear surrounded by these large men. After all... Gunner was small. How much damage could he possibly do? I nodded, sitting back in my seat as the car started forward. We drove for about fifteen minutes before pulling up to a small park. It was well lit, the full moon glowing above, casting cold light against the grasses below. A small playground settled in the center of a sea of grass. Beside this was a path with lights hanging down around it to keep it bright. Every morning he comes running. Every night, too. I chimed, 
reading the man's information on a slip of paper I found in my folder. I remember taking his night run pictures, at more like dusk than dawn. I was excited. You could hear it in my voice, see it in my eyes. The men all got out of the car, leaving me to my studies. In a sick manner, I wanted to know everything about this guy I could. The men all got out of the car, leaving me to my studies. In a sick manner, I wanted to know everything about this guy I could. Sadly, much wasn't on you. Job, unknown, family, unknown, friends, none, so on and so forth. It was as if this guy wasn't even real. There were pictures I took of him chatting with a few people. He gave away soup at a kitchen, was seen paying for someone's groceries, talking to other people. Snorting at the goody-two-shoes bullshit, I turned a page to see a small section. Girlfriend. Sawyer. Black, dark hair. Blue eyes. I just had a small picture of them together next to the writing. She was pretty. Man, that's who wanted him killed. Maybe that's who wanted him killed. Bastard probably cheated. I scoffed. Time went by. The moon was slowly starting to die behind the trees. The stars danced. Where were they? It had been a good twenty minutes. The sun would be up soon, and so would other people. I glanced around looking for any homes, but the park was rather secluded. It was then that I felt something smack against the car. Scrambling to the window, I looked outside. Ricky was making his way to the door. I moved myself back into my seat as the driver's side swung open. The large man settled back in his spot, tossing a gun into my lap. Glove box, he snarled. Only seconds ticked by when the back door was opened. One man climbed in. The gunner was shoved next to him before the last man sat down. I sneezed a few times, causing Ricky to grunt in irritation. Saw the gun. Tail went right between his legs. Fucking coward. Ricky laughed. I glanced back at Gunner. His face was covered. Hands tied, feet tied. He didn't move as we started the car. It jumped to life and started to cruise forward. I raced my fingers through my shaggy blonde hair as we started our journey. The minutes ticked by. The sun cast dapple light against the clouds, but it was swallowed whole by the threat of a storm. Rain ticked against the window an hour and a half later, until finally we pulled into a forest. The trees were dense, large. A two-hour drive, and finally we were getting close. The entire drive I had completely forgotten my hate for Ricky laughing, joking, and even smoking with the three. You can have whatever drugs you like after you make your cut, Ricky mused. My treat. Excitement was bubbling up in my chest as a small home showed before me. It seemed like something you'd see out of a horror movie. One should be worried a bad gust of wind might just knock it down. Holes littered the roof, and in the driveway was a small Chevy Cavalier. That's your getaway car. One of the men informed me from the back as they opened the doors, roughly tugging Gunner out of the car. He let out a grunt, falling to his knees before being hoisted up. I stepped out as well, sneezing a few times as I did so. I glanced at Gunner as they dragged him towards the front door of the house. I had almost forgotten he was in the car. He had been completely silent, not a word, and didn't try to move or escape. Something about the man made me shiver. He acted as if this was just something to be expected. The house loomed over us, its old windows angry. It smelled of dust and mold, letting out a loud groan as the door was pushed open and Gunner pushed inside. The inside was covered in dust. The floors were carpeted, also covered in dust. The insides were empty, gutted out years ago by whomever owned this home. Now all that was left was an old couch, dead in the middle of the place as well as a small table with a few knickknacks set on it. Gunner was pushed into the couch, and when his body hit the pillows of the cushions, dust exploded everywhere. I sneezed a few times as the dust covered the rooms. Allergies? One of the men laughed, opening the door to the basement. Only to fur, and not dust, I mused. It must be a cat around here. We need to set up and get ready. You stay here and watch him. Ricky stated as the three made their way down the set of stairs. Each step screamed under the weight of the men. They're so big, the wood's probably gonna break. Am I right? 
I nudged Gunner's arm with my fist. It don't look so glum. I sat across from him, sniffing as another sneeze took over. You get to go to heaven. I'm sure you're religious. I saw you giving stupid people money. Gunner's eyes glanced up at me. Anger was fuming in their depths, as if they were made of fire. You mean the homeless people? He growled. Yeah, whatever, those fuckers. You know, they sit in front of my apartment and eat up all the space. He didn't reply to me. The anger in his eyes just seemed to grow. I felt awkward as I tried to think of something to say. What was I supposed to say to someone I was about to help kill? Nice weather recently. I fumbled. It'll be real nice tomorrow. Too bad you won't be seeing it. No answer. So, uh, Blue Eyes, she's your girlfriend. I opened my folder, pulling out a picture of the girl. She's hot. Maybe I'll make her mine after this. I heard the venom in my own voice. If not, I might not give her a chance. I felt wonderful to talk like this, to have so much power. He couldn't say a thing to stop me either, but his reaction wasn't what I expected. He laughed. His laugh seems to echo against the broken walls of the home. She's scarier than me, he whispered. I bit my lip. What did that mean? I got up, deciding to explore to pass the time. I checked my phone. No signal. I checked across the empty room, but all I found were the car keys for my getaway vehicle. I pocketed them. Turning back to Gunner, who was staring out the window, the rain lightly padding on the ground below. A few drops of water fell from the broken ceiling. Before I could say anything, Ricky walked up the steps. We are ready. With that, the men came back. They started to herd Gunner down the steps, shoving him harshly with each step. He let out a small hiss of pain as I bound down after the group with a jump in my step. As my feet hit the floor, Dust kicked up around us. I watched one of the men ruffle Gunner's long hair as he was forced down into a chair in the dead center of the room. I sneezed a few times as my eyes adjusted to the darkness that collected around us. The only light was from a dim bulb on the ceiling. The sound of shuffling could be heard before a sharp, bright light flickered on. I glanced down to the floor as the brightness burnt into the depths of my eyes. My boots were covered in dust. The blood still settled on the top of my boots from what felt like ages ago. That's when I froze. I could see shoe prints in the dust from all of us. I followed the prints from the stairs to Gunner's chair. One of the prints wasn't human. It looked like the prints of an animal. I immediately noticed one of the male's shoes had fallen off in his scuffle a few hours back. But why would there be- Hello everyone! Snapping my neck towards the voice, I looked on in shock. In front of Gunner was a large spotlight that shone light directly on him, a few monitors, and a video camera. Ricky was wearing a pig mask, laughing as he introduced himself to the world. This was it. It was one of those livestream murders. I heard of these things happening in the dark web, but I never thought I'd be part of one. I forgot about the paw print as excitement rang through me like a bell. Ricky tugged a small table from the darkness. On the table were tools of all sorts. I could see messages pop up on the screen. Put an ice pick in his knee, one typed. Drill through his ribcage, another wrote. Scalp him, one roared. Now, now, we'll get to all that, Ricky laughed. First, we have a special guest. I felt a nudge. I turned towards one of the men who was holding a duck mask out to me. I felt my heart flutter. I gladly took the plastic mask. I placed it over my face before digging through my bag. I pulled out Gunner's file and the knife, letting out a gasp of surprise as the file slipped. A few pictures fell out of the chocolate-haired male going about his life. My heart tucked. For a second, I froze. Dissociating as I tried to figure out if I really wanted this. But the money. I looked to Ricky, whose hand was out to present me. I felt another nudge as I gripped the knife and made towards the camera. Scrooge, everyone, Rick laughed. He's gonna be cutting off a very special tattoo before we get started. Ricky made towards Gunner, who was looking dead in the camera, the same fire in his eyes as before. The large man took a pair of scissors off the table, 
cutting open the other jeans to show off the large tattoo on his calf. The world started to go quiet in my ears as I made towards the other leg. Completely focused, I didn't even hear anything Rick was saying or doing. It was as if the world was underwater. I slowly placed the tip of the knife against the skin. I shook. Everything was in slow motion. I looked up at Gunner, who glanced down at me. His eyes flashed. Was it fear? No. It was... something I couldn't identify. You'll regret this, he whispered. I can smell you from miles away. Next time, don't spill any blood. I stared at him. What did that mean? What felt like hours was only a few heartbeats before I heard Ricky shout my username. I plunged the knife down. The sick noise that followed sent a shiver up my body. The groan of agony from the man in the chair caused me to break whatever spell was held on me. I slowly started to move the knife around the tattoo. The skin let out soft pops as the knife moved against its soft surface. Crimson dripped from the large cut in his leg to the ground below splashing onto my boots in the same manner as the meat from work. A giddy laugh broke from his lips, sharp metal gliding through the flesh like butter. The blood was covering his legs, my hands. I couldn't believe it as I closed the circle around his tattoo. He let out a few deep groans, and as I started to cut the layer off, I froze. Under the bloody skin was something else. I pulled the knife back, running the tip over the dark, uh, hair. I sneezed. Why'd you stop? A voice asked. I looked back up at Ricky, dumbfounded, before starting my cutting again, but this time, no noise came from Gunner, as the large flap of skin fell to the ground. I glanced at the opening in the skin, only to scream. I jumped back in confusion and horror. Ricky scrambled back to prevent me from bowling into him. I told you, Gunner growled. He had been glancing down at me while I was working, and now he looked up slowly to me and the other men. His once amber eyes were now a bright yellow. His face was starting to twist. His teeth clattered to the floor as the skin on his body bulged and moved as if they were a ripple in a calm lake. His long hair started to move, swaying, covering his back. The skin split open, blood racing down his body as the skin crackled to show off the fur under him. Panic exploded through my body, fear burning through my head, blood roaring in my eyes as a small voice screamed at me to run. What are you? I heard someone yell. He's still tied down, Ricky shouted. Kill him. All three men rushed Gunner who let out an inhuman, earth-shattering howl. Everyone froze in fear. It took a few seconds for me to regain my control as I got to my feet. The men seemed to return to reality as they grabbed knives, scissors, anything to kill Gunner. Fuck this, I hissed, glancing at the screen of words. Everyone seemed to stop typing at once as the large men struggled to shove anything into the hard flesh of the wolf. He's getting loose, Ricky shouted. Charlie, help us! I looked from the mess of bodies covering Gunner to the door before looking down at the large chunk of tattooed skin. My jaw fell. Charlie! Ricky shouted again. With that, the cords holding the werewolf let out a sickening snap. I raced forward and snagged up the skin, blood still dripping from it, but the tattoo was clean. A deer skull. In the middle were three large slashes. Just as I grabbed the large chunk of flesh, Gunner sunk his teeth into one of the men's necks. I watched in horror as the thorn-sharp teeth broke through the skin so easily. It was as if the man's neck was made of nothing but jello. Gunner tore a large chunk of flesh from its host. Blood exploded from the open wound, splashing against the wall. I didn't waste any time. I grabbed my backpack and started for the stairs. The sickening crunch of bones could be heard as my feet met the first step. Charlie! The anger in Ricky's voice was nothing compared to the fear that pumped through my veins like blood. I ran halfway to the steps when a loud scream pierced my heart. My feet stumbled for a few seconds, but I refused to look back until my hand collided with the cold metal of the doorknob. 
sucking in air, I slowly turned to look at the mess below. Blood stained the floor, covered the walls. One of the men's heads had been crushed into the floor. His brain was smashed into the tarps that covered the area. The other's head was stuck in the wall as if Gunner had tossed it into the now broken computer monitors. Finally, I glanced to the first step where Ricky was trying to pull himself towards me. Charlie, please, he begged, holding out his hand. Gunner, who had been breaking the rest of the computer equipment, slowly started to walk towards Ricky, whose legs were bent in odd ways, being dragged behind him. Please, he begged. Gunner dug his claws into the man's leg, yanking him down from the few steps he climbed. Charlie, he shouted, tears racing down his cheeks. I shot him a smile, waved, and opened the door. Should have promoted me. The look on Ricky's face is forever burned into my skull. The look of betrayal. I slammed the door behind me, and now I had to run. No way that werewolf was going to catch me. I tucked the scalp of skin into my bag, ripped off the mask, and pelted through the house at top speed. Not only was my old boss dead, but I was about to make a lot of money. I couldn't believe my luck as I tore open the front door of the home, slamming it behind me with force. The car keys jingled in my pocket as I fished for them. It only took a few heartbeats for me to find them. A howl ripped the piece of the outside apart. Rain slowly started to fall again as I scrambled to shove the key into the car door, pulling it open rapidly. Dumbasses! I laughed. I was on top of the world again as the car roared to life, causing my body to slowly start to relax. It only took a few minutes for me to put the house miles behind me as I drove as fast as I physically could down the streets. No way that wolf was going to find me. I was safe. I just had to drop off the skin and I was good. I glanced in the back mirror, and in the darkness of the dying day, I could just make out a large shape. It was charging towards my car at an alarming speed. Fear flickered back into my bloodstream. I cursed under my breath as the rain slowly fell. I knew the forest was thick, long, and dense. Half of me wanted to pull over and start running, but I knew that he'd track me down easily. I felt hot tears burning into the sides of my eyes. I don't want to die. I was just about to make the money for my own restaurant. Another howl. A deep, angry howl. I knew I was toast. Done for. Dead. I'll never do this again. I just want my own restaurant. I was just desperate. I shouted into the air, eyes wide, palms shaking, sweat racing down my brow. I didn't want to die. I promise I'll never hurt anyone again. That's when it stopped. Not the car, not my tears, but the feeling of dread. It was as if the weight was lifted from my body. I looked in the mirror. Nothing. The rain was the only sound I could hear, and soon, I was out of the trees. I'm home free. I drove home, I changed, showered, put the skin in its proper place, and left. Now, here I am. I'm sitting in a coffee shop, waiting for the mystery person to give me my money. I have the skin in a bag. I don't know exactly what happens tonight, or even if he was a werewolf. I just know it happened. You don't have to believe me. I don't care either way. Because I'm about to be the proud owner of a new restaurant. The only thing I'm a little worried about while I wait... I can't stop sneezing. It's giving me some bad anxiety, but I'm hoping it's just my clothes. They're covered in dog hair. I've been waiting an hour or so. Only people in here are a barista and a lady. It's not her. The lady who's picked up the skin is said to have blonde hair and blue eyes. This lady has black hair and blue eyes. I'm gonna go talk to her and see what she has to say. Maybe she just dyed her hair. She has a bag with her. She actually looks familiar. Oh well. Wish me luck, everyone. I'll keep you updated if anything else happens.